Green Sly Fox. Thanks again for joining me on my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks that I have learned along the way for carrying over 70 plants in my house. If you are new to my channel, I would love to have you here as a subscriber. Make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. What was your first house plant? I would love to know. My first house plant was my peace lily and I have split it into two separate peace lilies now and it has rebloomed already once for me. So hopefully come January, we may see a couple more blooms. That would be great. I'm gonna be giving you guys five majors major tips, major things to consider when you're looking to get into houseplants. Make sure you stay tuned and here we go. Alright, the first one would be choosing your plant and choosing the right plant for whatever your life schedule is. Whatever you're trying to introduce to your lifestyle, you're going to need to consider, like any living thing that you bring into your space, how you're going to be able to care for it, and if it's going to be worth the energy that you want to put into it. So if you're a beginner and you're just starting to get into some common house plants, the best ones that I always encourage for beginners are things like aloe vera, um, philodendrons, pothos, phytonas, peace lilies, and um, they're all really good in different types of light situations. They're all really good adapting to overwatering and underwatering. So those are the types of plants that I would stick to if you're just starting. But if you have a place that has like little to no window, I have a plant that hangs out on the very dark side of my one very dark room and it's called a aglaonemia red. I believe that's how you pronounce it, but it's like a Chinese evergreen. And um, the darker it is, the better it does, and all it needs is water. And I do have Marimo moss balls that I have everywhere that are just in jars, in darkness. Bathrooms can vary. Mine has a very small, tiny little crank window that is on the one side of the house that barely gets any sun whatsoever. So in my bathroom, I have a golden pothos and I have an aloe vera in there right now. Things like ferns, anything that is very tolerant and loving of humidity would do really well in a bathroom as well. The second hack would be to get to know your plant. Be consistent. So if you take the time to read the tag that usually comes with a lot of specialty plants, you're gonna need to know like where they originated and then kind of mimic as best as you can to their natural environment. So if it's a tropical plant or something that grew in mountains or it's an epiphyte where it's not tolerant to be in soil, all of these things are usually found on the tags. Uh, save the tags. Put them in like a container. I have a seed box that I keep a lot of mine in or I just keep them all with whatever pots and stuff that I'm using for that season. So I'll so for window placement, south facings will get much more light than, say, a north facing. And then as east and west facing vary on the intensity of, like, afternoon sun. So you can download an app on your phone at this point and point it in the direction that you are and literally learn which sides of your home are which direction facing. The third one would be watering and feeding. And I think feeding is something that people kind of, like, snicker at or just kind of forget. It's like, why would I feed my plants? Like, well, would you only give your baby water? So no. Obviously, you're going to give some kind of nutrition and sustenance and food to whatever needs it. So it's no different with plants. As far as when and how to water, that is circumstantial for each plant. A lot of plants don't like to be watered from the top because it's a risk of crown rot, so you wouldn't obviously want to pour directly on top. Always at soil level for those types of plants. A lot of plants take water from the bottom, like all of my African violets will not tolerate being watered from the top anymore because it burns their leaves, which is probably my fault because I have them in my greenhouse, so that plus the water plus the sun that it gets, if I'm not careful, will magnify the intensity and kind of scorch the leaves so you never want to leave um, leaves wet and then have them in direct sunlight. And then as far as misting your plants go, it's usually just to keep them dust free. They can't absorb the water into their petals 
or stalks, you know, tops of the foliage like you would expect it to absorb into soil. So as, far as feeding goes, that's like something that kind of ties into what kind of soil you're using is when to pot, which is tip number four. You'll get signs on when to repot, and the ones that are most obvious are you're seeing roots um, out of the bottom of the drainage holes at the bottom. If you see bare roots, you're gonna wanna go ahead and repot it. If you go to water your plant and the water goes right through that soil really fast, it may be bound and starting to coil. Um, around its roots, which is another sign is if that's obviously you, you lift it out of the side of the pot and you see roots starting to wrap, then it's time to repot. Oh, another thing, and it's kind of happening with my oxalis over there, is um, new leaf production is slowing down or the new leaves are significantly smaller than the current leaves, which is also the case. Um, so we're gonna have to get that repotted soon. And then as far as soil goes, soil is a touchy subject because it's literally everything that is going to, I think, determine how well your plant's going to do. It's really important to make sure you're picking the right soil. And there's so many different kinds now. I mean, we have one specifically for cactus and succulent, which are loftier, looser, and less compact. There's expand and grow, um, there's moisture control indoor um, versus outdoor. Just make sure you're referring to your tag and you're getting the proper soil for that. So cactus and succulent, I would stick to that specific blend. Um, same for African violets, and orchid bark for like Phalaenopsis orchids, that is probably the best medium that you want to use. The plants can get their nutrition from that soil without having to be fed fertilizer too often. As long as your soil is healthy, they wouldn't need an excess amount of food. And I mentioned this in a video before, consistent watering is gonna compact your soil down. If you take a skewer and just kind of poke it through, or I have stainless steel chopsticks that I use for sterilization purposes, and that just kind of moves the soil around, gets you know the ability for the water to get to the roots, and the soil isn't crushing anything or not letting water pass through adequately. So it's really important to do that every couple of waterings. That's kind of it, guys. Guys, I did film this once before um, and I did it facing a window so as the sun went down the camera shifted and you lost my face and I hated the video so I privatized it a while back so I wanted to make sure I refilmed it. Go ahead and tell me what is your favorite houseplant. Thanks for joining me guys. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Uh, make sure you subscribe.